This video is brought to you by Gamefly.com. You can rent 8,000 new releases and classics on most major systems, all delivered right to your mailbox. If you use this URL to sign up for a free 30-day trial, you can test out their service and help support my channel. The link is in the description, so go check it out. With the release of the PlayStation 4 Pro, the term super sampling or down sampling has been getting tossed around a lot. It promises to make your games look better on 1080p screens without you needing to purchase a pricey 4K TV to take advantage of this new, more powerful console. PC gamers have had the ability to use super sampling for years, so in this video we're going to take a quick look at why you might want to use it, what it is, how you can do this in your own games, and what type of results you might be able to get. This is going to be a very quick overview and I'm skimming over some of the finer details, so I've linked some more resources in the description of this video if you want to do some more in-depth reading on the topic. This is a crash course in super sampling, not an in-depth exploration of all the details. I recommend watching this video in the highest resolution your internet can handle, or downloading the video file I've linked in the description if you want a pixel peep. So why might you want to use super sampling? Well, you're probably familiar with aliasing or jaggies. That's the stair-stepping, shimmering edges on objects in games, especially when you're gaming at 1080p or lower. What causes this? Well, when you look at a computer-generated image, you're looking at a bunch of small squares. Pixels. Pixels are all the same size, and they can each display one single color at a time. Lines can only be shown to you as a collection of small squares, so if that line is diagonal, or you're looking at an object like a circle or a curve, you're really just looking at a bunch of small squares that are trying to approximate what the curve or line looks like. You might have a very complex object being displayed as just a dozen pixels, and that's really not enough to give you a good clear picture of what that object looks like. That's because each pixel determines what color it's going to be in any given frame by a process called sampling. Imagine you're playing a game that has this water bottle sitting on a table in the background. Each pixel that will be displaying this bottle samples it. Each dot represents a sampling location. That's the pixel looking at the object and trying to determine what color to show. And remember, this is a very simple, generalized description of how this works. The computer decides, then that color is displayed. It doesn't really look like a bottle, does it? That's because it's not taking up that many pixels, so we're trying to display a complicated object with only a few colored squares. So how does super sampling work? Well, imagine we were looking at a 1080p display in the last example. Now, imagine if we could render that same water bottle at 4K, or 4 times 1080p resolution. Then we have 4 times the number of sampling points. We can still only display the same number of pixels as the image before, of course. It's still a 1080p screen with a fixed number of pixels. But, by taking four times the number of samples, some of those pixels are going to choose a different average color to display. Now we might end up with the water bottle looking more like this. Same overall number of pixels, but they're more accurate pixels. We're not changing the amount of information we're looking at on our screen, but we're making that information more accurate and it therefore looks better. You might be wondering, why not just use anti-aliasing to reach the same result? Well, there's no global standard for anti-aliasing. Some games have a bunch of great options, some games only have one or two, and they all work to various degrees of efficiency. There are even some methods like MSAA, that stands for multi-sample anti-aliasing, that do a quick and dirty version of true super sampling. So why not use those instead? Well, you can. It's not going to be as accurate, but it also won't be as demanding. True super sampling can be very demanding, because instead of rendering a 1080p image, you might be rendering a 1440p, 1800p, or full 4K image, then displaying it on a 1080p screen. That's going to be as hard on your system as trying to actually natively game at those resolutions on those screens. This is a brute force method that isn't efficient, but it can work very well when a game doesn't have great AA options. Even if a game does have great AA options, a combination of super sampling and some light post-processing AA can make the game look better than AA can all on its own. If your GPU can barely keep the frame rate you want at native resolution, this may not be for you, but if you have a really powerful card and a lower res screen, you might have a lot of GPU power sitting around that can be put to good use. If you want to see how hard your system is getting pushed, I use MSI Afterburner's performance overlay to monitor my system and the Potato Masher, and there is a link in the description. As a quick side note, some newer games now have options to increase or decrease your rendering resolution. I'm not covering those in this video because they don't all work exactly the same and I don't want to assume anything about one particular game. So that's enough explanation, let's talk about how to turn this on. Assuming you have an NVIDIA or AMD GPU made sometime after about 2012, it probably supports super sampling. NVIDIA calls it Dynamic Super Resolution, or DSR, and AMD calls it Virtual Super Resolution, or VSR. 
I've included links in the description that will show you how to enable it, but you do it in your GPU's control panel. It takes less than 30 seconds to turn on, and after you turn it on, you just go into a game's options menu and pick a higher resolution than your screen supports. The UI is going to get smaller in many cases, so keep that in mind, but that's all you have to do. You can even pick different resolutions for different games and it'll remember them. As far as the game knows, you're just gaming on a higher resolution screen. Now, how much better is it really going to look? I've recorded these games on my main PC at 1080p using Shadowplay, and unless otherwise noted, all other clips are also recorded at 1080p to simulate a 1080p screen. I've also capped my frame rate at 30fps in most cases, so I can show you comparisons without the frame rate varying wildly between examples. I'll also be slowing the footage down to make it easier to see differences, so let's start with Rise of the Tomb Raider. Look at this scene. While this is a great looking game, there are plenty of diagonal lines, shimmering edges, and other stuff that doesn't look good. We're going to focus on three areas of this scene. The tools on Lara's belt, this flagpole, and these leaves moving gently in the wind. Up first is Lara's belt. Here's how it looks at 1080p with no anti-aliasing. Here's how it looks at 1080p with 4x SSAA turned on. Here's 1080p super sampled at 1440p with no additional anti-aliasing. And finally, 1080p super sampled at 4K with no additional anti-aliasing. Next, the flagpole. Here's how it looks at 1080p with no anti-aliasing. Here's how it looks at 1080p with 4x SSA turned on. Here's 1080p super sampled at 1440p with no additional anti-aliasing. And finally, 1080p super sampled at 4K with no additional anti-aliasing. This is a great example of a diagonal line that benefits a lot from super sampling. Last, let's look at those leaves. Here's how they look at 1080p with no anti-aliasing. Here's how they look at 1080p with 4x SSAA turned on. Here's 1080p super sampled at 1440p with no additional anti-aliasing. And finally, 1080p super sampled at 4k with no additional anti-aliasing. You can see a big difference in the quality of the leaves and branches. Now here's the entire scene at 1080p with 4x SSAA compared to 1080p super sampled at 4K. 4K is of course going to be very demanding, but it's hard to argue with those results and remember this was all recorded at 1080p. Next is The Witcher 3. This scene has a lot of moving grass that's very noticeably aliased, so we'll focus on this section with the grass and signpost, and this section with Geralt. First, the signpost. Here it is at 1080p with no AA. Here it is at 1080p with the in-game AA enabled. A definite improvement, but there's only one AA option so we can't turn it up any higher. Here it is at 1080p, super sampled at 1440p and with the AA on. And finally here it is super sampled at 4K with AA on. A pretty noticeable difference. Next is Geralt. First, 1080p with no AA, then with AA then super sampled at 1440p with AA, then super sampled at 4K with AA. If you want your Geralt to look as good as the White Wolf deserves, then you might want to try super sampling. Okay, so these still scenes are all well and good, but how about when you're moving? I find that to be where super sampling can look even better. Let's assume we're leaving AA on for The Witcher 3, so here's three comparisons. 1080p, then 1080p super sampled at 1440p, then 1080p super sampled at 4K. Notice the huge reduction in shimmering and jaggy edges. This is a big difference you can notice while playing the game in pretty much any scenario. Next, Dirt Rally. This is a very fast moving game and it can be helpful to have the cleanest lines in the distance and it's less distracting while you're driving. Or maybe that's just my problem. At any rate, the game moves too fast to line up things in the far distance, but take a look at the edges of the car. Here's 1080p with no AA. Next, 1080p with 4x MSAA. That's a nice improvement, but let's knock the MSAA down to 2x and super sample at 1440p. Lastly, 2x MSAA and super sampled at 4K. Let's look at another example of moving in a game. Here's GTA 5. GTA has a lot of great anti-aliasing options, so here it is at 1080p with 2x MSAA. Next, here's 1080p super sampled at 1440p, still with 2x MSAA. Lastly, 1080p super sampled at 4K with 2x MSAA. 
You can see the reduction in jaggies and shimmering across the image, even though we're still just viewing it at 1080p. Now we've been looking at this primarily to see how good stuff can look on a 1080p screen, but of course it doesn't look as good as actually playing a game at 4K natively. Here's a communications tower with a lot of intricate fine detail in GTA 5. First, you're looking at 1080p with 4X MSAA and NVIDIA's TXAA turned on. It's not very jaggy, but it's very soft, and in my view, that's anti-aliasing taken a little too far. I don't really like it. Next is 1080p super sampled at 4K with just FXAA for anti-aliasing. It's sharper, but the jaggies are a little more noticeable. Compare that to native 4K. All that's changed is we're now on a 4K screen and recording at 4K. Everything else is exactly the same. Big bump in sharpness and detail, but you can see that those antennas are still so thin that it's hard to get them smooth. Just not enough pixels, even at 4K. Well, here's 4K super sampled at 8K. That's four times 4K resolution and 16 times native 1080p. It goes without saying that the game is basically unplayable at these settings, but the difference is cool and you can see there's a just insane amount of detail. The best I can do for a driving shot is 4K super sampled at 6K with FXAA, and you can see that it's not handling it well. Still, this is where affordable technology could be in another five years, and the image detail's crazy. Here's another example of The Witcher 3. Here's the game again at 1080p. 1080p super sampled at 4K. Now compare that to native 4K, and 4K super sampled at 8K. The game is unplayable at 8K because the frame rate is like 5, but it still looks great. Don't be discouraged if you don't have high-end hardware that can render modern games at 4K. You can still get many of the same benefits by super sampling at 1440p, and you can also go back to older games and super sample them to look better than the first time you played them. Here's Far Cry 3 at 1080p, super sampled at 4K. I can easily max it out and it looks quite a bit better than it did when I first played it three years ago. Of course, a high-res screen is a great upgrade, but you can reap some of the benefits of high-resolution gaming now. Try enabling super sampling on your GPU and try a few older or newer games and see how good they can look. This video was a lot of work, so if you enjoyed it, consider hitting the like button or subscribing to my channel. You can also check out this video on manually locking your frame rates and how that can make your PC games feel a lot smoother. Have a great day!